Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the Hesse. We have been working on the vocabulary words from chapter 3 of this book right here, the Hesse Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. As I said, we are working on the vocabulary words for chapter number three. In addition to the vocabulary words, if you need help in any of the math problems that you will find in this book, you will see that you will find that we have solved every single math problem that you will find in this book in our series of math HESI videos from day number one through 50. Just type in HESI math day one through 50. You will find the solution, as I said, to all the math problem in this book that is in the event that you need help with the, with the preparation of the math portion of the exam. If you feel after having done this, after having done the problem from this book, if you feel that you need even more help, you will find that the math on the T's is very comparable, very similar to what you will encounter on HESI and there are 80 videos in that series. You might find those videos of some use as well. One never knows until one tries. Today is our lesson number, today is our lesson number 19 and we are on page number 51. Page number 51, the very first one we're going to learn today is let's first write it before we worry about the pronunciation. That's the E. Question is, how does one go around, go about pronouncing it? Must cure, must cure, low, skill, a, toe, musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal. It's a mouthful. It has. Too many syllables, you have to make sure you have to make sure that you slow down, otherwise you will muck it up. Do you understand? Muck it up with an M, not an F. Don't get excited. Muscu musculoskeletal. Musculoskeletal. What does it mean? It means exactly what it says. It has to do with muscles and skeleton pertaining to or having to do with pertaining to or having to do with, having to do with, or relating to, relating to muscles and the skeleton. Muscles and skeleton. Musculoskeletal. Musculoskeletal. Having to do with muscles and skeleton. I do not know how they would use the, how they use the term in the medical field, because as I said, as I told you before several times, I'm not a medical person. I have no training in medical field. But musculoskeletal having to do with muscles and Skeleton. Maybe you can say that the that the that the athlete suffered the athlete suffered musculoskeletal injury. His injury had had something to do with muscles and skeleton. Who knows? I'm not sure if it works, but that's the best I can do. Let's move on then. Next one, number ninety-three. Number ninety-three. So she was looking for some foreign guy with a very strange accent to tell you that he's about to teach you medical terminologies of which he knows nothing, you have come to the right place. The next word is Oh this is a very simple word. 
It's a very simple word and yet it has two equally acceptable pronunciations and we're going to learn both of them. So here's the first pronunciation. Nu Rol Neurology Neurology Notice Notice the first syllable The first syllable here Is nu Neurology Some people pronounce the same word as As Neurology Neurology with the Y sound in it, neurology and neurology. They are both acceptable, equally acceptable as I said. Neurology simply means study of nervous system. The study of nervous system. The adjective would be, the adjective would be Neurological. Neurology. Neurological. Neurological, or or sometimes you will see people use simply neurologic. They leave out the al as as an adjective neurologic the damage was neurologic or the damage was neurological the disease is neurological it's a disease having to do with nervous system let's move on then number 94 number 94 Word is there is another word. There is another word where I need to come clean. A word that I had never seen before. So we're going to learn it together. Occlude. A. Occlude. It's a word. What does it mean? To occlude, it means to cause to become close. It means to cause something, cause to become close. Cause something to become close. Cause to cause to become close. It means to to obstruct or to prevent the passage, to prevent the passage of something. Occlude. One may occlude uh, blood flow, one may occlude light, so that the light does not pass through anymore, light is obstructed. One may occlude a pathway, one may occlude a pathway, or one may occlude Blood circulation. That's how it. That's how you would. That's how you would use it in the context of medical field. Occlude means to to hinder, to block, to to obstruct, so that it doesn't flow freely as before. The blood circulation seems to be occluded. It seems to be obstructed. It doesn't flow freely. Let's go on to the next one, number 95. Number 95 that I have here is not something that is in the book. So let's put it here first and then we'll put 96 which is in the book, up, up there. The word is... The word is... Oh, why don't, why don't we put it on the top? Ninety-five. The word is... It's a noun. An omen. What is an omen? An omen is a is a
phenomena that is supposed to that is supposed to portend or foretell foretell means exactly what it says to tell us ahead of time to tell us about the future to foretell it's supposed to portend or foretell a future event a future event and usually this word is usually used usually it is something bad or negative an omen has a negative connotation it is usually something bad it is a it is a It is a prophetic sound. It is a sound that is based on a prophecy. A prophecy is something that tells you about the future. Let's take a look at the meaning one more time, shall we? Did you notice something? Yes, you did notice it, didn't you? There is a mistake in the there is a mistake on the blackboard. There's an error on the blackboard. Did you catch it? Let's let's take a look at it, shall we? Omen. It says it is a phenomenon. O oh, has to be singular. Phenomena is not singular. Phenomena is a plural. Phenomena is a plural of phenomenon. It should have said a phenomenon, not a phenomena. It's a mistake that you hear very often. People go around, I have heard many a times and I find it extremely annoying, gets on my nerve. People going around saying this is the only criteria we used. Oh, for Christ's sake, if it's the only one, if it's the only one, it cannot, it cannot be a criteria. If it's the only one, people, as I said, go around saying the only criteria that was used. Well, if it's the only one, it cannot be a criteria. If it's the only one, it cannot be a phenomena. It has to be phenomenon. Singular of criteria. Do you know what singular of criteria is? Singular of criteria is criterion. Criterion. It should be instead of O, we have O N. Criterion. I put it on the blackboard to see if it bothered you. If it bothered you, if it hurt your hurt hurt your eye, that's a good sign. Let's keep on going, shall we? The word is omen. It is a noun. What's the adjective of omen? The adjective of Omen is what you find in the, in, in the book, which appears as 96. The adjective of omen, omen would be ominous. 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 Which simply means that a sign that something bad or something horrible or something terrible is going to happen in the future. As I said, it is used typically in the negative context. Ominous is typically used in a negative context. It carries a negative connotation. It carries a negative nuance. Is there a word which has a positive connotation, positive uh, nuances, positive nuance rather? Let's find out, shall we? A word which means in other words, a word which tells us something that, about something that is going to happen in the future, but something that is going to happen in the future, something that is a good thing, it's, it's, it's a good news, as opposed to ominous. Ominous carries a negative nuance. L let's find out, shall we? 97. Let's see, let's see what I have for 97. If it's not right there, it will come up soon. Oh, it, it, it is coming up. Let's first take care of the words I have before I forget. The next word we want to learn is portent. By the way, by the way, these words beginning with beginning with uh, ominous was in the book. You will find that I numbered it as ninety six. But all of these other words that we're going to learn, 97, 98, 99, and 100, they're not in the book, so don't bother your time looking for them. They're not there. Portent. What does it mean 
when you say it portends? Portend means to serve, to serve as a warning. As a warning of something bad that is going to happen. That is about to happen. Just give me one second, I'm, I'm not still here. I'm not going anywhere. Portent. It means to, it means to foretell something, something nasty is going to happen. To predict. To predict. And again, usually a bad event. Portent. Let's move on to 98. Another word we used was prophetic. Per fair tick, which is an adjective. Prophetic comes from the word prophecy, which simply means it is based on a prophecy. It is based on a prophecy, it is based on a prediction, it is based on some knowledge that we have about the future. Let's learn the word, a word which means to predict an event in the future, an event that is a good event, an event that is a good news. Not ominous, but something that is a good, something that is good to happen. Let's learn a word such as that, shall we? In other words, in other words, a word with a positive connotation. And the word is... Os, o, o, ish, auspicious, auspicious is the prediction that something good is going to happen. A prediction, a prediction that something good is going to happen. something good is going to happen. So if something starts out, something, a project that you undertake or, or something that you undertake, uh, an uh, endeavor, a project, a work that you undertake, and it, it starts out nicely, it has a very nice beginning, you say it's an auspicious beginning. It is an auspicious beginning, it's a very promising beginning. On the other hand, if it starts out uh, in a way that it uh, that it turns into disaster right from the very beginning, something really bad happens. Well, you say, oh "My God, this is very ominous. It's very ominous. It foretells bad thing that might happen in the future. Ominous, auspicious. Bad stuff, good stuff." Let's move on. Then let's learn one more word having to do with predictions. Having to do with making prophecies number 100 and the word is very simple word with just two syllables auger o ger auger what does it mean to auger auger means to simply auger simply means to predict to predict to foretell, to prophecy, but the word auger, but the word auger is a neutral word. It doesn't have a positive connotation. It doesn't have a negative connotation. It does not tell you that something good is going to happen. It does not tell you something bad is going to happen. It simply tells you something is going to happen. It's a neutral word. So in that. So, therefore, in that case, if we were to use the word auger, you would say something 
so if, if something good, uh, if you have good beginning in some, some project, it, it starts out very well, then you say it augurs well, it augurs well. On the other hand, if the project or something starts out badly, it starts out in a horrible way, terrible things happen, then you say it augurs badly. It augurs well, it augurs badly. But you have to uh, put something at the end because by itself augur simply means that uh, it predicts something. Well, what does it predict? Something good or something bad? Well, if something good, you say it augurs well. That was number 100. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.